Being um, vulnerable and being put in a, a vulnerable position and ends up said being protected from a protector. We are in a world whereby we have... Well, a very good morning to you uh, this morning. We are coming to you live from the Ngozi Albert Wichuli International Convention Centre where the uh, AIDS conference is taking... Uh, yeah, with the, the official program has just started. The deputy president of the country, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, was scheduled to take part in the discussions today, but his place will be replaced by the deputy minister of higher education and training, Mr. Mduduzi Manana. Well, uh, this morning we've had the first lady, uh, Ms. Tobega Madiba Zuma, uh, uh, opening the, 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 the official program, uh, highlighting uh, quite a number of issues, one of which was the fact that more emphasis needs to be put in, in, in actually um, in actually ensuring that uh, the, the the infections of uh, young people is curbed in the country and also the issues um, and also the issues that uh, are actually affecting young people need to be tackled head on but to actually get a feel of what is happening on the other side let's now cross over to the main stage you got drunk and then they end up hating that person do not it, she didn't ask for it, what she was wearing, whether she was wearing a long skirt or a short skirt, she never asked for it. Lastly, lastly, I would also like to honor those women who died because of in their silence and let us break the silence as young women. We are sick and tired of having young women who die every day in silence because of they are afraid of shaming people. It's about high time as young women we stand up and name and shame people. We will not die in silence. So before I close, I'm told that I have 30 seconds by now. One second. <laughs> One second. So as a young man sitting in this room, whether you have a degree or not, or whether you are a minister, the deputy minister, ask yourself this question. What does your male privilege do in this world? Thank you. Thank you. Viva! Young women, viva! Now you understand, she conquers. Thank you, thank you very much. I'd like now to, I don't know whether we should have actually ended with uh, Lerato, because now you're going to continue quoting on um, dictated upon who you sleep with. Eish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she did not ask for it. I'd like to now move right along and um, ask from Afrimen campaign because we say nothing about them without them. I, unfortunately, you have to be the voice of the males or you're going to highlight the challenges of the males. I know some of your insights. Prepare yourselves to be blessed in the true sense in this instance. Your three minutes start now. Tsepang Mabizel. Hello. Uh, good, day, good day to the First Lady, good day to the Ministers, good day to all official uh, governments, good day to uh, the people that I came, uh, good day to the youth. Uh, um, it's a very tough, very tough act to follow because I'm representing all men and Uh, so I couldn't, I couldn't be as, 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 as free as I wanted to. You need to tread lightly, you need to express yourself, but uh, also, you know, the standpoint. So, we react 80% to our environment and act 20% towards it. Those are the rules of the environment. And we are products of history, culture, and heritage. All things passed down from grandfather to father and then son. Because behavior like genetics, it's... It's hereditary, it molds us, and it is the clay of man. We are byproducts of already faulty teachings. Every method, formula, and step has led us to this result. Everything miscalculated. Chemicals rapidly added throughout time, and now, uh, now the reaction is ready to erupt like volcanic mouths. Maybe I'm being too scientific. Maybe too over the top with my phrasing, so I welcome you to break down every construct into concept and then words so we can all understand the standpoint of every Afri man. Throughout my talk, I'm going to address elements of the environment and their results of every Afri man that is a product of the soil. We are products of the soil from every standpoint. We are created from clay like the Bible states and 
like, every, like scientists will point out, we are, we are primordial atoms. First, I'd like to speak of the modus vivendi. This is the manner of living. So I would like to talk about what it means to be a man when you're a boy, the, trans the transformation, when the teachings are almost unconscious, the actions are impulsive and thoughtless. So it's a conscious decision that we must take not to, be, not to act like the men we have been made to be. We are not designed empathetic. You see, that is a superpower mainly reserved for what our ribs have created, women. Abo mam, bosis, nabokok. Remember that empathy is the ability to feel what others are feeling. And if we had this feeling, then we would not have the rapes, abuse, instabilities, deserve. I use the word deserve intentionally. Because Jim Rohn, a speaker and author, speaks on need versus deserve. He basically states that you don't get anything because you need it. You get things because you deserve them. When you plant produce, you don't get produce because you need to sell. You get produce because you've watered the soil and because you've taken care of the crop. Thus, you deserve the produce. Come fall. My point is this. I am subconsciously entitled because I am a man. My selfish need leads to my deserve without having had watered the crop because watered the crop because I think I deserve everything. That is the modus vivendi, the manner of living, the code amongst men. You see, we are thieves born into mob families and extended families. We are products of a happening. One minute. We are processing the cycle. We are cogs in the mechanism where every action strengthens the structure. What structure? The one that runs on ignorance because we are not omniscient. The one that runs on disbelief because we are not vigilant or we don't try enough to be. So, I welcome you guys to be present and conscious to our unconscious. You see, In I, don't, I don't have enough time. I really don't have enough time. Because <laughs> I'd like to address certain elements, like groupthink. Women who wear short skirts deserve it. Wait! That, Listen. that Listen. is a social... Psychologic, that is a so-called psychological theory coined by Irvin Jenis, which states that groupthink occurs when group makes faulty decisions because group pleasures lead to deterioration of mental efficiency, reality testing, and moral judgment. These are the thoughts of your modern man. And it's in such a society I found myself in. The truth is we are all in small groups. Letting our thoughts transmute into our beliefs. It's our beliefs which drive our behaviors. So our manly actions that we express are results of our circles because we are the sum of the people we spend our time with. Thank you. Thank you very much. I allowed him to finish that thought so that he's not misquoted. I, you know, the unfortunate reality is that all the speakers were informed that you have one minute. So let I not be seen as that witch, right? I'm just doing what I'm tasked to do. Three minutes each, remember, Today is about you. We only have two hours to hear your opinions, to hear your views. We also are available as shoulders to cry on. Let it out. Don't get stuck with the pain that you experienced like 20 years ago. It's 20 years later. In order to move on, you need to tap into that pain. Let's help, let us help you to tap into that pain. When we begin to take questions, I am humbly requesting that you write it down lest you be chopped whilst you are trying to express yourself. Uh, we have three mics, I was told. Is it still three or two? I'm seeing two. All right, there's one in that um, aisle and there's one on this aisle. And when we take questions. So you cue where the mics are with your question. And we will take the questions as per the queue. If all of you decide to be on that queue, just remember that we only have two hours to have this conversation. I'd like now to call upon someone who's going to help us not to fall into this phenomenon of believing that somebody else has to bless us as young girls, um, but that we become our own blessers Amen. and we become the blessees of the blessers as we conquer. I'd like to now call upon Ms. Mandi Sandombela, uh, uh, DG of Malay Trust. Your three minutes start now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris Alda. Warm greetings to everyone in the room. Special greetings to our First Lady, Deputy Minister, and all the presents that are before us. Um, you guys all look so lovely this morning, and thank you for coming. 
So my task this morning was just to briefly talk about the economic empowerment of young people, more especially of women. I was laying last night in bed trying to just wrap my head around the whole dialogue session for this morning, and there's this word that I'm so fearful of seeing, Moody's. Every time I see Moody's, I begin to cringe, you know, when I see Moody's in South Africa in the same line. The crisis that we are in as a country economically, or what we are being formed to believe through media, makes me cringe as a young person and more so trying to chase her dreams. And I don't think that this should begin to feel like a burden for any young person who has any career dreams or any business perspectives that they're trying to chase. But what I'd like to just outline this morning is that we can't deny the fact that there are several challenges that we are facing as women. Larado, you spoke profoundly about, especially about the power domination that we are experiencing. It's everywhere. It's in the workplace, it's in school areas, it's in business. And we, oh, I'm personally so tired of having to feel the need to protect myself when men are perceived as protectors. Ulado said as well that we are constantly protecting ourselves from protectors. When is it going to stop? I'm also so tired of hearing people that are meant to lead us saying that we need to, we're still going to. When are we actually going to get down and do the work of economically empowering our young people? But also, Chris Alda mentioned something so important that it, the responsibility goes back to each one of us and each one of you sitting here. You need to take ownership of your life and do something. Ask questions, be curious. Ask questions, I, I can't overemphasize that. There are so many opportunities that have been afforded for young people in our country. We've got the NYDA, we've got CETA, we've got CETA, we've got TETA. There's just so much. It's a matter of aggressively pushing for these opportunities and not being afraid to ask for what you want and not being afraid to hold anybody accountable for what they said that they would do. Um, just to briefly outline challenges that I've personally faced in my line, there's cultural challenges that we're experiencing. You're young, you're a black woman, you're in the workplace, your senior is an old black man who's old enough to be your father, if not your grandfather, because the age gap is now so outraged in the workspaces. And this person constantly refers to you as Ingani, or this child. And then you ask yourself, well, but this person's my colleague, so how do I then relate to you when you're con constantly perceiving me as your child? Moving on very quickly, I can see that I, Chris Alda. Um, so we're also constantly trying to defy social expectations and to constantly try to find our place in male-dominated fields. You can't even walk into a construction briefing without feeling a little bit out of place because you are one out of the two women in the room. And I feel that me, that needs to stop. And it belongs to all of us that are here this morning as leaders in our own space to try and change mindset. The solution that outlines everything that we've been said this morning is a change of perspective, a change of mindset, and shifting mindsets of Abanda Basha, Abba Holy Bear, to end ourselves, because again, it goes back to accountability and taking responsibility for yourself as a citizen of South Africa. It goes back to active citizenry. It goes back to moving together in the same direction and having unity in mind. Each one buying into the dream of where we are trying to drive South Africa to and getting buy-in from various stakeholders. And each one of you this morning are a stakeholder of our country and you have your role to play. Make sure that you're doing your part and playing your part. You can't keep pointing at someone saying, this person owes me something. Nobody owes you anything. Take accountability for yourself and take responsibility. What I am asking for and what I am hoping to see is responsive leadership. Responsive leadership from people that have been placed in positions to lead us and take us forward as a country. Responsive leadership from people that have been giving um, roles of seniority amongst different people, whether it's in a varsity, whether it's in an office space, or whether it's even in a school, wherever you are, be responsive to the people that you are leading. We are also asking for transparent accountability systems. If you, you said that you would do it, do it. If we can help you drive it forward, how do we do so and how do we hold each other accountable? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is now that time I did introduce to you um, leadership that is in our midst. Uh, you've heard from our members of the panel, and it is that time where we're going to be taking your questions. We have 30 minutes with the first set of questions. I did mention that the mics are on both aisles. You walk to the mic, the mic doesn't come to you because we do not have capacity, there's way too many of us. You walk to the mic and the cameras will be on you. Whatever you say, forever hold your truth, your peace. It shall be held against you some way. Whether it's heaven or hell, you get to choose. So I'm now going to request that we line where the mics are as we take questions. 
for this session. I'm going to take 10 questions first. Uh, Deputy Minister is also standing by to answer some of the questions. And we also have a team from Higher Education AIDS Program. Uh, you know, we have the First Things First campaign. We have uh, men's dialogues. We have She Conquers is also part of the conversations we have. Um, Dr. Lamnik Alwalia and team, if you can just wave, is here to answer questions. So are we ready? You must remember whatever question you ask, we are armed. Where is my list? I did mention to you that we have leaders from the traditional house of traditional leaders. So no question is major or minor for us. We have a representation from the correctional services. We have cooperative governance and traditional affairs. We have justice, we have finance, we have health, and we have incos in our mess. How blessed are we? All right, I'm going to start there. You ask your question, we come this side. Ganjalunj, we get it, right? If it's too high for you, just take out the mic. Or, or just bend it so that it reaches, yes. There you go. You start. San Bonani, my name is Sembega Jacqueline Sikakane. I'm a DUT student. Volume, and please. And I'm doing my PRB take over there. So my question is based to um, the lovely um, First Lady. Um, she actually mentioned about a program she just launched about being a voice for the girls that can't actually speak for themselves. So my question is, um, is there a strategy that you, that you guys are going to implement for the young girls who can only speak sign language that are being molested every single day? Thank you. Thank question. you very much. Next question. To save time, can we have all the questions at once and then we we'll applaud and then we have the responses? Do you agree? Thank you very much. My name is Isasi Pingosim Dingi. I'm a University of Fortress student. Um, one thing I'll first ask to everyone is here, are we asking the right questions? Not long ago it was one in nine, today it's one in three. And year in and year out, we continue sitting in ICC and discussing, finding solutions. And my question goes back to the fact that our issue here is pie tracking but we never have a discussion on pie track, which is the root cause of what whatever you like that we discussed. Here. I want us to, to, to have a conference or whatever it is, discussing issues of pie track because it's what leads us to where we are today. All right, let's go back to the rules of engagement. In order for us to be progressive, it's one thing to point a finger and say, but, 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 but. We're here now trying to find solutions. So as you come up, and this is all, to all of you who are going to ask questions, as you come up with a question, lead us. Remember, we're here as the voices that are going to come up with answers. So lead us, let's not just throw questions and it just becomes an elephant in the room. Name it for what it is. If this is the issue, what do we do? How do we move forward? We have corporate governments uh, right here in our midst. We have a house of traditional leaders right here in our midst. Okay. So the question, let's go back to the question and how do you propose we move forward? Okay. To the uh, in issues of constitutionalism, can we have a dialogue, whether in parliament we invite young people to discuss the issue of death penalty? It's been going around for long. And the loopholes in our law when it comes to he who alleges must prove, which is continuously make a victim to reveal and relive that life and becomes a problem in our society. Thank you. And lastly, can we have these discussions in institution of Heine Link? We have UKZN, rather than having it in exclusive places where People that are leading it are SRC members, whereas there are Zazi young people who are actually passionate about issues of HIV and AIDS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to have he AIDS. 
responding to that. As a brand ambassador, I know that we've been uh, in the long and breadth of this country going to all higher education institutions. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, Dumelang Batbaesh. Lekaise. I am Sinotando Dube. I'm representing UNISA. I am studying there. I'm studying law, the LLP. I'm also representing the, the youth of Yeteguini youth sector of, of Durban. My question is based on the criminal justice system in this country. My question is, we are sick and tired of women being killed each and every hour only to find that the, the perpetrators who kill women are going, the, the victims are going to be told that those perpetrators have got rights. What we are seeking is that let the death penalty come back. You rape a person. You rape a person, you face death penalty. You kill a Thank person, you. you face death penalty. Thank you. That Thank is you. the only solution to this problem that we are facing we right you. now. We hear Few you. weeks ago, I met a woman. Uh, yeah, so bona, yeah, man. Few weeks ago, I met a woman who was crying in tears. A 15-year-old child had been missing for two weeks. The perpetrator was arrested, but she was told that the perpetrator deserved a bail. At the end of the day, to be told that so you've got what rights. is the question to the justice system? The question to the justice to the justice system is that how long will it take for the death penalty to come back? Thank you. That's Thank what you we very want. much. We're making progress. That side, please. Whilst you're clapping, I am moving. Okay. You cannot. You cannot Thank you. Go. The first thing is, whenever we have these conferences, let us get young people who have first experience. Let us get people who will talk about things that they have been through. What does it mean? That's the first thing. Secondly, we are speaking about She Conquers. Let us also look at programs where we can encourage young boys and men. Let us also include the LGBTI communities in these programs. Thank you. Thank you. We very cannot much. exclude them. We hear about every man. We come from our rural areas. What is every man? Where are they based? And what are they doing? You said every man. You said every man. Every man. You want to know about that program? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tewo Rapabi. I'm from the Free State Province. Actually, I'm hearing from all the people in the panel here, but who made he to do the actions that he's doing? Maybe we should, as the traditional leaders are here, we shouldn't go and engage the fathers down there who created all these monsters. Can we have a program that we are addressing the fathers who are beating their mothers every day? And no then the mothers are, are actually in silence, so they are, their daughters become silent too when they are beating. As their boys also, they see what their father is doing as a good thing, and then we go out and then we practice that. So I'm challenging the panel to create such progress, and that will be progressive. Got you. Fathers must account. What we do, we saw it on them, from them. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, we're not going to ask questions. We're going to provide solutions. And from the solutions, uh, hopefully the point of uh, discussions will be provoked. We have been selected as delegates because there's capacity to provide those solutions. Uh, number one, I think it's a challenge uh, to the Minister of, Deputy Minister of Higher Education, Comrade Mdutuzi Manana. I think that Comrade Mdutuzi the panacea of all the challenges or the master solutions of all the challenges faced by the women are one, 
economic freedom and number two is the total implementation of free education which which must be done now the issue of students protesting must never be viewed as mischievous or inconsiderate but that thing must be implemented now diligently and elegantly as you master the cloth thank you diligently yeah. and elegantly thank you and the last question last question yes yes okay yes. i missed the question the last will be i will want the traditional house yeah it uh, to to do away with all the backward traditional uh, 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 traditional practices that perpetuates to uh, undermining of women. They do away with lobola. Lobola is objectification of women. Do away with ugushola. Do away with polygamy. If we favor polygamy, establish polyandry for women. And then, uh, because I believe that, thank you. Because I believe that the tradition and so, culture. So let's, let's bring it back. Remember, you want someone yes. to respond to yes. your question. So when you make it a speech, we get lost. You want responses yes. on polygamy and possible want, solutions so that they can be engaged. They can engage. The you want responses on. Uh, I'm saying that they. From the, the traditional house. Traditional house. Yes. Because they should not treat culture as dogmatic. I mean, uh, you know, in analysis, there's what so you need call, a platform to discuss yeah. yes. in, issues uh, of tradition that are exactly. holding us back. Yes. Thank culture you, sir. Thank must you. be modernized. It can't be dogmatic. There's in analysis, there's what we call periodization of events. Thank you, so sir. So we can't Thank approach you. 1860s issues with uh, 2007. Got you. Got you. Uh, Thank analysis. you. Thank you. Thank I'm you. going to now request our panelists to respond. We're taking a commercial break there. I'm going to request our panelists to respond, and then we take another four. Ganja, lo ganja, lo ganja. So I'll start with um, the services for sign language uh, as a platform for young women who are violated and are deaf. Thank you, Griselda. Um, to the lady that uh, posed the question, yes, we're rolling out the programs, and we're not rolling out these programs that are giving the platform to our young girls to have a voice alone. We have other relevant stakeholders that we work with, and our biggest partner is the government. So we do work with the Department um, of Women and People with Disabilities and Children. Work very closely with um, Social um, DSD and other NGOs in the space. Um, so the program does include people with disabilities, if I understand your question correctly. But what we also now are championing for, we work with a, an organization called Jess Ford Foundation. Um, Jess Ford was, was raped, gang raped, while she was walking beside the father on the tree, and then they raped him. So she started a foundation, and she worked with um, centers that are co um, they refer to as Tutuzela centers um, that respond to the challenges of women and girls that are raped, and that they are able to open the cases correctly, that they don't get rid of um, evidence. You know, um, they also provide them with, you know, the information. So we work very closely with organizations that deal with issues of disability and also with SAPS, whereby a disabled person goes to the, the, the SAPS to report the case, but yet she cannot speak. So we, we do work very closely with the, the NGOs that are uh, um, specifically dealing with uh, people with disabilities, as well as government. I don't know if I've answered the question um, comprehensively. What? Here's a suggestion because it's Inja, like that dog is so mean. So we are going to take all the questions of all of you who are standing right now, all those questions, and then we'll have all the leaders responding to those questions. We go this way. Um, greetings, my name is Tabilem Luli, I'm from the University of Zululand. Um, my question is, what are we doing, um, because yesterday after um, the, uh, well the, okay sorry, 
So the thing is we found that um, HIV and AIDS is more prevalent from girls 15 years and older. So then when we get to university, so what are we doing to then prevent that or to decrease it in high schools or in primary schools as well? Because when we already get to universities, um, things have already happened. and situations have already happened so then what are we then doing to combat or to eradicate such things so that when we actually do get to tertiary education we are having less sittings discussing about you know females in high school who are actually facing such situations thank you so suggestions would be that uh, education on HIV begin at primary level yes thank you next uh, greetings, my name is Given Mashidisho from TTU Polugan Campus. Mine is a proposal, not a question. Uh, Deputy Minister, uh, we have programs like NYDA which their main focus is to expose young women and men to opportunities. But the problem is that they are more focused on developed townships rather than rural areas. And we need program, programs like this, uh, NYDA and other programs that are exposing young men and women to opportunities in more, more in rural areas so that young people in rural areas know the opportunities that they have. Because the only thing that we know of when we are in rural areas is that you must go to school and become a teacher or a policeman or stuff like this. And there are, I believe that a lot of opportunities are out there for young men to grab. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tandegile Njovu. I am coming from the University of Kwan Um It's a, more of a comment um, and a question. So I want to comment um, and challenge uh, this comment towards Amato Da La Perumin, as in men. I want to state that I want to quote Guti Ubukulumile Putuam Guti Abantu Beti Iminiskating Gikogi Luxis Low Uz. I want you guys also to go back to the roots and consider what the culture Guys, please. Guys, is my right. What if I'm nudist? You don't consider that. My daughter, I'm going to stance. You're nudist. I'm going to And then I'm and then umbuzo. Then umbuzo am. And then umbuzo uti. Then umbuzo uti ni intole se nanzele luguti like the problem is that we lack confidence as women. So when funu umbuzo uti, I'm an organization. Jalo foods funny mal, stands jaluguti, ama pismus senzen. No bas funu kepi HIVs funny mal. Yeah. Se abo. Se funa uke by HIV we want to have economic freedom in this lifetime. Cecilia Mova says, um, good day to the house at large. Ika Amangu Vyuen Dudula from the Eastern Cape representing Seoul City. Um, first of all, I am going to make a comment on the fact that women have given power to the men when it comes to the bedroom. The fact that you as a female don't carry a condom, you expect the guy to be buying the condom means that you are giving the responsibility to him. So I would suggest that women, you carry a condom, whether it's a male or a female condom, you give the responsibility to yourself that carry a condom because it is your choice after all. And an exposure to the female condom because most people are not aware of the female condom. So I feel like the government is lacking there because and it's, 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 it comes in limited edition and you find that it has improved when you don't even know the first edition. So I would like an exposure to the female condom. Um, another question is that a challenge that we face is that our service, healthcare services are not um, uh, youth-friendly. You find that you are being discriminated against it for using or exercising your sexual reproductive health rights. Who do you report to when the sister that's giving you the service is in charge? So who do you report to at this instance because the person that is higher is the one that's di discriminating against you. Thank you. So what, yes, that is my question. Thank you, and Dr. Please to Zoma, the men, who do we tell when... Don't rape anyone. <laughs> when the nurses best moves are when we're asking for contraceptives, go to why, when's the sex? Who do we tell? 
Yevo. I'm Sanbonani. Ikamalam Gutabile from UK ZNPR Marisbeg. Um, I've got a few questions. The first one I'd like to address to Ms. Mandy Santombela. Um, Mandy, so we heard your speech, it was lovely, but it lagged on one point. You didn't tell us what you are going to do for us as the Murray Trust. We'd like to know more about the programs that you are going to provide with. Okay, secondly, um, Department of Health, Ubabudom. What are we doing about before I went to figure a seat, isn't it? There's this thing you're going to see so things happen then. So I would like to know what is being done about that and also how are we making sure that the girl child finishes matric? Because some girls do not even go to school because they don't have pads. I mean a pad is a necessity. We give condoms and they're readily available, but something that is going to make sure that the girl child goes to school and is not afraid to stand up and answer a question when the teacher asks is not... Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Noted. Your next and last question. Yes, my last question is, we spoke about deconstructing constructs, but we find when we go to empowerment that there is a lot and a lot of fraud and bribery, corruption. What is being done? Because you go to any department, you produce or you go and fill in a tender document, but because you don't have money to pay a bribe, your business is, gonna, is not going to be given an opportunity. But opportunities are given to people who already have money. What are you saying to me? Are you saying that I must have a blesser that is going to bless me before I can have a business? Or are you saying to me, I must go and sell my body before I can have an opportunity to okay. actually Thank you. be able to get that tender. I want money. As Tandy said, we both so, from UK so and PNP. The question we want money. Please. The Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance, way. Minister of Health, Minister of Education. I need each and every department to work together with us Economic and find out from us what we want. Right? My proposal. Oh, one last final question. I'm sorry. My final, most final question goes to the Department of Correctional Services. There's a scourge going around. Children are abducted from the hands of their mothers. It happened in Imbali, Unit CC, where a mother was carrying her baby from wherever she was coming from, and she, at gunpoint, was told to give the baby to whoever was in the car, and they pointed a gun at her. So we are afraid of our lives, at UKZ and PMP, we are afraid to go to the library at night because you are afraid of being stolen. And people, are apparently, because of these constructs that are very, very irritating to me, they feel varsity students deserve things that come to them. Whilst people are actually going around, taking us, abducting us, making us perform acts that are not according to our will. So I want to know from the Department of Correctional Services, what is being done? about this. We want the death penalty if need be. With immediate effect, we heard you. Yes, I am. Dynamite. Yes, I am. 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 Basically, what I just wanted to ask um, it's going to be a question and a statement following that. Um, I just wanted to ask, after all this trauma that the girls have been through, they come back home, what happens to them? At schools right now, at our campuses right now, we don't have a section, not even one class dedicated for counselling. Right now, there are students in a line every single day waiting at the SRC office with huge problems. We, as the students, as the youngsters, can't even handle ourselves. And yet, we're supposed to give answers and situations and uh, give them solutions to their problems. And yet, we don't even have one class designated to even one counsellor. There is not one counsellor in the whole entire college for students. So, and every single day, these girls are experiencing problems beyond sure. that they should ever. Yes, which college you, is this? 
this is Om Kongundlo. Om Kongundlo. Yes, this Noted. is in Peter Maritzburg. Yes. So I just want to ask, was it after all this trauma because it happens and then yeah. they come and back the home? And the statement? And they, uh, yeah, the statement is, no, it's not really a statement. It's more of a question. Uguzi, can somebody, he is, is going around and saying they're giving solutions. We have these programs and everything, but we're still waiting for just one class for counselors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Noted. Yes, sir. Good day, everyone. Good morning. My, my name is Yanda Zulu. I'm from Pumalanga Township was, was in Hammersdale. In Hammersdale. Near Peter Marisberg. <laughs> and it, it's such an honor to be standing in front of you today. Uh, the thing is, I'm nervous, but I'm going to speak, you know. <laughs> and I'm going to speak. Lale, okay. Lale. Please, okay, ma'am. Please, please understand, ma'am. Please. Uh, uh, my... Depending on what you say, ne? Yes, ma'am. You might end up on Metro FM. Okay, ma'am. So, so that's so Tata the fame thing to a different level. Okay, okay, So we come back and Please, no publicity is bad publicity, ma'am. I'm an entrepreneur. When's I on, Anjay? I'm an entrepreneur, and I, I have a, an enterprise called Empire Two. Okay. Empire Two has a brand called Complete Hygiene. It Complete Hygiene. It Complete Hygiene provides services and sanitation in my community. Uh, I. I start, I'm a class of 2014, and I started, I started selling my cleaning products to my community uh, to get feedback. I know when I commercial, Jay. I'll tell you a question here, but let's go to this Wait. side. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Close ma the mic. Think about your question. Let's come this side. Your question, please comment. Um, hi, everyone. Hello. Um, Ningam he needs to construct his question. Uh, my name is Tozama Bosman. I come from Vert University. To make a statement, a very important statement, I'm going to ask a question. The statement that I want to make, and it goes to the government officials, but to everyone actually. When we complain to you, can you please not turn my complaint into an angry black woman rant? I hate it. Where when we complain, it's like, ah, oh, she's just a black woman. Can we stop? Can we, are, we are complaining and we are serious and we are hurt and we are in pain. Do not turn my complaint into an angry black woman rant. That's all I ask. That's my Got statement. You. Two questions. Okay, my question. That was a statement and I have a question, right? I want to ask the officials, everyone, that victimization of women happens in every department. So I'm not going to um, single out anyone, right? Um, where I'm, I'm an activist. So when we go to departments and whatever, we, we get victimized by you guys, right? So the people that we ask for funding, for talks, for anything, they still victimize us. So what, we, what I want to ask is, as much as you are saying um, you are helping women outside and whatever, what are you doing in your own house so that you should stop patriarchy, everything inside the ANC-led government? Thank you. We back with you. Okay. So the feedback I got from my had me design a hygienic educational learning program that helped promote healthy living. Right, come on, so guys. Come on, come on. Let's give him. Let's give him a chance, please. Please, please, please. Let's please give him, give him a, chance. a chance. Listen. The program that I designed is called Hygienic Educational Learning Program. So and I was initially inspired by HEA's program and Love Love to design this program because in my community, I protect kids. I make sure that the fences are, are, are because I bring uh, services and I want, I want a government, I want a government let, to take steps. Let's step. do this. Let's do my, this. Yes. <laughs>